This is what happens when you fly your when you fly your brand new Mavic Pro drone and you're flying to the side trying to catch Scott rather than follow him. I was following him and then I started going to the side of him and crashed into that cliff right there, which is really great. So bye bye drone. I trashed that Mavic Pro drone. Literally trashed it. Just trying to get a shot of Scott there. It's a cool drone, but I was going, I was panning out to the side. Didn't have any spatial awareness. Realizing where I was. Next thing you know, she's bust the crap. So so yeah, that was me smashing that Mavic drone to death. I've actually replaced it with another Maverick, Mavic Pro. Um, but I've had a few different drones. I've had the DJI Phantom 3 Pro, and I also have the DJI Phantom 4, just the standard one. And uh, I like the Phantoms to fly them better, uh, but that Mavic certainly gives you a real big advantage of being able to throw it into a much, much smaller pack. And so throughout the summer, I'll be taking that Mavic with me in a lot more places to be able to get some footage with it. Man, I love the power of the two strokes. That thing just eats hills for breakfast. This sucker has got plenty of power. I was just saying there how much I love the power on the two strokes and I've got to be honest a few years ago when I started this I was I'm just a novice rider and I'm getting better and better and I've gotten so much better at controlling uh, four strokes and being able to keep them running I was just riding the Sherco 300 SEFR last night and uh, going up some really nasty stuff with some with some wall hits that are like you know chest level and stuff that uh, is really really tricky and I was going up, going up it with this four stroke knowing that you know it's harder to keep it running and I just did. I was able to keep it running uh, because I've gotten so much better at uh, clutch control. And uh, But the, the interesting thing about these two strokes is a lot of these two strokes are so much easier to ride in some of these tricky situations that it just kind of right makes way? you get lazy almost. I mean, it'll make it then. Okay. Double check because we we're gonna head back to the truck and grab a, grab a bike to eat. This thing was going more north than I was thinking I wanted to go. The thing I love about this 250 is that it, yeah, it doesn't have quite as much low end grunt as the 300 does. But this thing has enough low-end grunt. It's got more low-end grunt than any of the high, you know, high-performance four-strokes that I've been riding over the last several years. So it's easier to keep it running in those situations. It's it's more fun to ride, in my opinion, way more fun. And the the other thing is, it's more free revving than the 300, and so it just likes to get out and scream and and rev a little bit higher and more free than the 300. So it makes it an interesting combination. And right now, I'm just totally digging it. Such a cool area. You know, today I had a rep uh, reach out to me from WP Suspension to uh, talk about maybe doing a little bit of a, a test on some of their competition um, forks and competition shock that is like on their high, high-end stuff uh, on a Sherco uh, later this summer. And it's pretty, it's a pretty cool pretty cool concept I, I hope it uh, comes to pass but I was just talking to him about how amazing I feel like these air forks are on this 2017 KTM 250 XC I, I just feel like the bike is so well balanced and I love the adjustability of that air fork and I love the way it feels 
um, and it's also super, super light. And this bike just makes me feel like I can do things. It, it, ju it just gives me so much confidence and it's just, it's so light and flickable and pops off of stuff and I feel like it's so predictable. It's just been a joy to ride. Very cool. Just look at this landscape, guys. I mean, I know this isn't like a tropical paradise, but it, 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 later in the summer, I'm gonna be taking, you know, I'll be up in Idaho and up in some of the Utah Alpine Mountains. And the point is, you just get to see so many different amazing, amazing places, at least here in the Western United States. And it's like, if you weren't on a dirt bike, you wouldn't see this type of stuff. I mean, I've been an outdoors person my entire life and I've, I've ridden horses a little bit. Uh, I've ridden four wheelers a lot earlier in my life. I've done backpacking, I've done hiking, and I've seen some really, really amazing places and dirt bikes can take me to all of those places in a much faster time and it has just been so amazing to to start into this sport here when I was what 29, 28, 29 I guess uh, when I I guess I was 29 when I started kind of getting into off-road dirt biking and it's just taken me to some of the most amazing beautiful places in the mountains and in the desert and everywhere in between and I just I cannot tell you how in love I am with this sport. It's given me more fulfillment than anything else I've done. I've played guitar, I've, I've had a pilot's license, you know, I, I've done a lot of different things. I've done long range shooting, uh, you know, the, the list kind of goes on and on and on, but off-road dirt biking in this manner has just been such a fulfilling, fulfilling thing. And going down stuff like this, I mean, it's just been so fun to be able to, you know, test your skills and get better at things. And, and we don't have to have blazing speed all the time. And, and we can still progress in the sport and just have a blast. And I, I love dirt bikes, man. They're just the best. Hey guys, if you didn't already know, Patreon is the best way to support Dirt Bike Channel. We've got some really cool rewards over there, so click on the link up here that you see to become a patron. That'll take you directly to our site, and you can check everything out. Uh, you can donate as little as $1 per month, and it would really, really help us out. Thanks a ton, guys.